Thrilled to have back here on the Rich Eisen Show, as always, for Turner Sports, Ernie Johnson. How are you, Ernie? I'm wonderful, Rich. How are you? How great has this tournament been, man? It's just been, it's been, fun. It's oh, been great. It's tremendous. We love it every year when we get to do that. This is, you know how many years we've been doing the tournament now with CBS? The eighth year, which is, is gone by in a blink, and it just gets... It gets better and more fun every year and gets more unpredictable. And, man, this has been, you know, when you see two nines and an 11 winning, not in the first round, uh, but in the Sweet 16, it just it just paints the picture of how how totally unpredictable this whole thing has been. I do, by the way, in my bracket, yes. have, have Michigan in the, in the Final Four. Okay, taking on who did you think was coming out of the South? Virginia? Did you take uh, that? No, I had Arizona. Oh boy! I had I uh, originally I had Virginia winning the whole thing, and they had the injury to Hunter, and I said that's going to catch up to him at some point. I didn't think it would catch up to him against the, the Retrievers, but uh, no, I had Arizona there. But I mean, everybody, everybody's yeah. got beaten in that in that region, the region of doom. So. I know. Do you taking um, out Arizona and uh, taking out Virginia and putting in Arizona? You were just rearranging deck chairs in the South uh, Titanic. Yeah, you know? it's just ridiculous. Just re- and, and and here's the thing: when the tournament started, I got my first twelve games right. So I'm sitting here. I'm saying <laughs> this, this might be this might be a special year. I'm 12 and 0, and then I lost three of the next four that Thursday night, and I was like, uh, it was it was all down. If you could have only frozen time, huh. Ernie. If yeah. You could only- <laughs> <laughs> 12 and 0. Yeah, I do remember it was chalk, right? There was it was I, I saw that stat oh, after although, the, no uh, Loyola had won it was, that day. It was 11 and 1 was essentially was the uh were, were the the top seeds in the first 12 games. I saw that stat early yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. Right. But uh Wow. But let's not let's not dwell on my bracket, please. Well, I guess before we get before we get to the tournament here, I, I do want to talk about the selection show, Ernie, because there was a yeah. lot of criticism about it. I actually, really? you want, <laughs> 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 I actually liked um, you getting to the uh, meat uh, of of who's in and who's out first, because I could never tell whose bubble was popped just by merely having the brackets revealed. I I, I am wondering how that criticism was received. I think it's always uh, received by who? By I guess uh, you, by by you and the rest of the team there. By me. I mean, I you know, I I think that um, any time you're going to tinker with something like the selection show, uh, you're going to open yourself up to that, and that's not unexpected. Uh, but I think it was also a response, uh, you know, to previous years sometimes where it took too long to get all the information out. So I think that was. That was the uh, the number one thing is just let get, let's get the teams out there. Let's let everybody know who's in there. And and in the first forty minutes of the show, uh, we had everything out there. We had every bracket out there, and we had uh, you know all sixty eight teams in the first you know fifteen minutes of the show. So uh, in, in terms of that, that's that's fine. And then and then if if you don't like alphabetical order, okay, that's you know here's the thing everybody's going to listen to this and and nobody's living in a in a bubble and saying oh no that's perfect that can't be changed no they the folks who who put that together um always take into account what the fan wants and so uh you know that's let everybody have their say that's fine we expect that and then uh, and try to make the next one better than than the previous one and always try to get always try to make the next one better well like i said i, I would never be able to tell just by watching the brackets be revealed in the old style way whose bubble burst until you just saw it on a screen hey by the way now that you know where the brackets are these are the five teams that that didn't uh, that didn't get selected so uh, and uh, I'm I'm not one of those to be honest with you who was critical of, uh, of of it and I've really enjoyed the coverage immensely we have had Candace Parker on yesterday I just love all the different voices that you and Greg Gumbel have been uh, expertly, uh, mostly, it's been the two of you guys uh, hosting, and then tonight you're on with Charles and the rest of the crew in in Atlanta. Where who's on tonight? Well, well actually, uh, again, we split it up. In, right. in, in New York is Greg Gumbel with uh, Charles and Kenny and okay. Clark, and mm-hmm. then I'm down here with Seth Davis and Brendan Haywood and Candace and Greg Marshall from Wichita State. Ah. So uh, yeah, no, it's it's a very you know when you look at it. And folks may not have any idea how this all comes together, and I and, and I shake my head sometimes, wondering how it all gets done. Because especially in those those first couple of days, there were so many shows on four networks 
constantly. Mm -hmm. And you're just told, okay, you're doing halftime on True TV now. Okay, and then be ready to turn around and do the between game show on CBS. And then after that, you got halftime on TNT. And then you're going to bring see. Uh, TBS on the air. I mean, it's it, it's that way nonstop for so those two fun. days. So exciting. So now that it's slowed down a little bit, it's a little more manageable, and basically they're handling the CBS games tonight, and we're handling the TBS games tonight. Okay, so uh, on TBS tonight, uh, let's let's break it down. What do you think is going to happen uh, on the Turner Broadcasting System tonight? Our, our first game is Villanova, West Virginia, and I would uh, I would I, I hesitate to. I hesitate to go with the favorite there, but I will take Villanova. I mm -hmm. think they're they're playing so well uh, offensively and defensively. Although I, I I think West Virginia's got the toughest player in the uh, in the tournament. Uh, I think Javon Carter is is as tough as anybody out there, and has a wonderful will uh, to to get the Mountaineers there. But I just think Nova's too much. And uh, our second game on TBS uh, is Purdue and Texas Tech, mm -hmm. and so. Again, that's, you know, if you're looking for an upset tonight, you know, that would be a three over a two if Texas Tech were able to beat Purdue. But, uh, you know, it's, the, Texas Tech's just a very in-your-face, um, great hustle team. And, you know, knocked out Florida in their last game. And Purdue has had the situation uh, with Isaac Haas and the elbow. We understand that he's got a, a brace on that elbow now that has been approved for play the question now is is whether matt painter is going to play him or not so uh purdue and texas Tech's the second game and then uh and then obviously the uh the the regional final and then the the whole shoot match you're going to get the final four oh, on tbs wait. i mean what for somebody who, seriously for somebody who's been around uh turner for as long as you have ernie what yes. will it mean to have the final four on TBS. Well, so it'll be the second time, and it's and it's going to be a tough, you know, it's going to be a tough act to follow after what we had in 2016 with mm. the Villanova game winner at the at the buzzer. So, um, but it's it's just a it, it's such a cool event, Rich, and I and uh, until I experienced that Saturday of the final four, I had no idea how great a day that was. I mean, when you've got uh, you've got all these fan bases and all these colors and all this uh, uh, college enthusiasm in this one building. And it's just, it's just dynamite. So that's, uh, you know, we're looking forward to Saturday. And then of course the championship game on Monday and who knows who's going to be in that thing at this point. But uh, you know, we could have sister Jean on the pregame. Yeah. <laughs> sister Jean and Charles tomorrow. Barkley. I would yeah. sign for that right now. Yeah. I've already, yeah, I've already looked at, you know, the possibility of a, you know, you know, sister Jean and Charles on the river walk and, you know, and, and eating churros and and and, and would, it would just be special. But, so, uh, no, hold on a minute. Now, now, um, I would actually sign up if I may cross streams of Turner coverages here. Uh, Sister Jean in Area Twenty One. I would sign for that right oh, now. Wow. Yes. I don't, see, I don't okay. know if Sister Jean would sign up for that. I don't know, no, no, no. But what she would be sort of a human uh, uh, anti curse button, right? Yeah. I mean, don't yeah, you think? Yeah. Yeah, there would. There would I, I think KG would not need the cusp button. That's right. You know what I mean. We're in the presence of Sister Jean, and <laughs> and, uh, and and we had we we ran an interview yesterday too with uh, Eric Musselman's daughter Mariah. That's right. Who's eight years old interviewing uh, so this the ninety eight year old nun, and it was just delightful. And so it it's just part of the thing that just makes it such a special few weeks of the year. Uh, aside from all the brackets and and people, you know. Uh, talking trash and, and, and pulling for their teams and that kind of thing. But it's uh, it's just a wonderful time. And we're just, you know, eight years in, man, it's just it's been a it's been a wonderful it's been a wonderful thing to be part of. And before I let you go, Ernie, to go on uh, TBS tonight, I would be remiss uh, if I did not mention that your New York Times bestseller unscripted now available in paperback. Congratulations on that. Uh, Thank you. What 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 should people be looking for uh, if they didn't read the hardback? No, it's it's uh, it's basically it's the same it's the same book, but it's in paperback now, mm. and so it's out there, and it's at Amazon, and it's at Barnes and Noble, and wherever you get your books, and uh, and thanks to all those folks who read it and and, and made it a uh, that was that was beyond any of my wildest dreams that it would make the New York Times list, and it's uh, it's been uh, it's been an awesome experience to watch it and, and to hear from folks who have been uh, uh, impacted in some way by it. It's well, I mean, cool. nothing's more personal than a book. And and you pour it all out there in these pages, Ernie. 
It's it's terrific. It really it was is. A, it was a wonderful experience to uh, to have had, and it was uh, it's been a, it's been a great year. It came out it came out the day after the championship game a year ago, so we're kind of a year in. So it's uh, it's been it's been wonderful. I appreciate you, Ernie. You know, I I always love having you on the show. I really enjoy watching you. We'll we'll check back in as uh, as the association begins to to. Uh, cook with the winner go home stuff so yeah, always almost, appreciate it. almost playoff time man yeah we we finish this and turn right around and jump into the nba playoffs can't and wait and then opening day as uh, next week too oh uh, yeah and right. the masters and, That's yeah, right. oh, good stuff ernie thanks again we'll, all right rich you got anytime it. man you thanks. bet the best ernie johnson the rich eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience 